Good morning and welcome everyone to CSI All Things Stones Moisture Management and Masonry. I'm Christopher Screever, Technical Sales Representative from British Columbia, and I would like to thank everyone for making the time to join us here today. So there's a few housekeeping items uh, just before we begin. Uh, this presentation should run approximately 35, 45 minutes. And as we go through this information with you, your microphones will be inactive. But if through the course of this presentation you do have any questions, I'd encourage you all to enter them in into the text box. We'll do our best to get to as many as we can at the end of the presentation. Today, we're very pleased to have as our presenters, Kip Redding, he's National Sales Manager for Keen Building Products, Bob Hagenarge, Northwoods, as well as Mike Galen, uh, Canadian Sales Manager from CSI All Things Stone. And Kip, I, I know we're looking forward to this presentation, so I guess without further delay, the floor is all yours. All right, Chris, well, thank you. As Chris mentioned, my name is Kip Redding. I represent Keen Building Products. Appreciate everyone's time today. As we discuss a really important subject um, and some of the issues that we're battling in today's construction is moisture management in masonry. So a couple of the real quick bullet points that we're gonna discuss in this presentation. We're really gonna focus on the exterior wall assembly. We're gonna identify potential flaws, but really most importantly, we're going to discuss best building practice. So before I start this presentation, I really want to thank Canadian Stone. Um, there's really good, there's actually great synergies between our two companies because as I wanted, just discussed, we want to promote best building practice, but most importantly, we want to educate the end user on the features and benefits of rain screen. So real quick, who is Keen Building Products? What we are is, we're about a 20-year-old company. We're young, we're aggressive, and we're innovative. Um, our claim to fame, I guess you could call it, is we're the largest entangled net manufacturer in North America. So you're thinking to yourself, what does he mean by entangled nets? So if you're familiar with rain screens, if you're familiar with drainage mats, entangled nets are that plastic spaghetti-type material that is heat-fused onto a filter fabric. So the whole primary purpose of an entangled net is to create spaces, spaces and shapes. So in this presentation today, spaces and shapes for obviously a clear drainage plane as it relates to building envelope. But entangled nets also have another primary purpose, and that's for acoustics. Acoustics in the floor ceiling assembly when we talk about residential construction. So when we, when we work with dealers, when we work with end users, builders and developers in custom homes, in, in multifamily construction, what are your two most litigated issues? Noise and moisture. So the best part is entangled nets offer a solution for both. So why keen rain screen? So before I even answer that question, let me throw out another question for you. Why are we seeing a substantial increase in moisture-related issues? You know, as I mentioned to you, we're the largest entangled net manufacturer in the U.S. So we receive calls a lot of times from architects, engineers, fellow distributors like Canadian Stone, and saying, hey, how do I improve ventilation within the building envelope? So as a result, many builders, many developers are designing things a little bit differently. Of course, they want to keep water out but they also want to create a means for drainage, but more importantly, to allow that water to escape. So, you know, at our presentation today, we're going to discuss how rain screen wall, wall systems prevent moisture buildup by again, creating that air gap for drainage, but more importantly for drying. We have a saying in the industry, you know what? Materials are going to get wet, let them dry. So, as the next slide shows, what has happened to wall systems over the past couple of decades? You know, the constant exterior wall assembly is changing actually on a monthly or yearly basis. You know, architects consultants are designing high performance exterior wall systems since we're dealing with higher energy codes. Not only are we dealing with higher energy codes, but you know, fire codes are becoming more mandatory as well. So again, as a result, air tightness has increased. Not only that, but we think about as we design higher performance wall systems, what's the contributing factor to that? High cost, right? Budgets. What are we always up against on a on a project by project basis? We're dealing with high costs and budgets. So to counteract that, 
We're now implementing less forgiving building materials. We're dealing with OSB. We replaced plywood with OSB. Why? Because again, there's a cost factor involved. So as you know, with OSB, there's high resins, there's less breathability, there's a lower tolerance for wetting. So again, when we also think about lower building material quality, we're also dealing with reservoir type claddings. You know, as, as the presentation illustrates, we're looking at stucco and manufactured stone. What is the common denominator of those two types of products? Portland, right? They're both Portland-based products. So they're much more porous. So when we think about manufactured stone, they're much more porous than say cast stone or natural stone. So they have that capillary action to hold moisture longer. So as a result, we're dealing in lower tolerance for wetting. So our moisture capacity decreases as well as our drying capacity decreases. So on our next slide, I like these next two bullet points. They're pretty much to the basic point. Building envelope costs range from 10 to 20% of the total building cost, but represent 80% of the defect claims. And then the next slide here is even more descriptive. I'm not sure who's on this call that's ever dealt with Building Science Corporation, but I welcome everyone to check out their website at buildingscience.com. They come out with a monthly newsletter that really just focuses on building envelopes and better building practices. And I've actually had the experience of working with Joe out in the field. And one thing that's so great about Joe is Joe is like brutally honest. But I, I captured this quote from him, and I'll just read it real brief. More insulation, tighter buildings means that the exterior is now colder and wetter. Since no heat escapes, there's no airflow, all right? We're not helping that exterior cladding. So these claddings are holding moisture longer. Couple that with less forgiving building materials like OSB, you have problems. So with the next slide, what's changed? Wood lap, 70 years old, still dry. Why are we seeing homes that are over 100 years old not having moisture related issues? And the, the easy answer is this, you know, traditionally buildings were designed to deal with the movement of air. They didn't have cavity insulation. They didn't have continuous insulation. So as the points that we discussed previously, we're now dealing with building tightness. You know, I do a lot of presentations with architectural firms. And the common question I ask is, what is the life cycle of a structure? So again, I'm dealing with designers, right? So I'll get answers anywhere from maybe 100 years to 50 years to even sometimes 30 years which is crazy when you, when you really comes down to it, what's your term of a mortgage payment? 30 to 50 years. So we're supposed to be building buildings better, okay? But as a result, with every action, there's a reaction. So the slide that you're currently looking at, this is a perfect example. I'm sure many people on the call today have had experience with moisture intrusion, whether it's a stucco tear off or a stone tear off. Um, what I can tell you is this, I reside in Phoenix, I cover the West region um, for, in my previous life for a very large stucco manufacturer. And it doesn't matter what region you're in, whether it's a dry climate or a wet climate, you're going to have moisture related issues. And as a perfect result, I want to share the next two slides with you. This is a project called Ebb Tide. Ebb Tide is in Southern California. It's, it was a fairly new development, about four years old. And it was brought to our attention from Henry Products. Mike, if you could go on to the next slide. So what I want to illustrate real shortly is, you know, we talk about climates, whether you're in a wet climate or a dry climate, you're not immune to moisture intrusion. And a lot of times what I tell architects is this, it's not the systems, it's not the products that you specify and design but a lot of times it really comes down to the brass tacks as far as the details and how they're followed out in the field. Again, this is a project in Newport Beach, roughly 80 units, single family units were involved. Now again, these residences were less than four years old. Um, we were working with a, a manufacturer by the name of Henry Products. They brought this project to our attention. Essentially, they had a major mold issue. And through forensics, they developed or they found out 
that there was anywhere from 10 to 20 entryways of water at the roof line and vertical wall assembly. So it was it was almost like it was kind of eerie and, and kind of morbid because you had this large community where it was vacant. So what the builder did was he repositioned the home ownership into hotels for anywhere from six months to nine months. Because again, they had to reclad down to the studs and in certain cases, they actually had to replace the finished flooring as well. So as you can see in the upper right hand corner, there's a mock-up assembly. What we did is working with the builder, working with the general contractor on this, they wanted to ensure a bulletproof system. So we worked with Henry Products on their air weather barrier, um, as well as our keen rain screen. In this case, we used a six millimeter rain screen, which is essentially quarter inch and a sheet of jumbo text because again, they wanted a bulletproof system. So through testing, we ensured the builder that we had at least 95% drainage. So that, I just want to kind of bring this to everyone's attention because again, it just really hits home as far as it doesn't matter how old the structure is, you're not immune to any sort of moisture intrusion. Uh, next slide, Mike. So we talk about the definition of rain screen. Rain screens really kind of throw it out there quite a bit. So really you need three major components. You need your air weather barrier, you need your created airspace, and your exterior veneer. So in today's presentation, we're going to talk about full wall drainage mats and furring systems, okay? That's kind of the product offering that Keen offers. But here's what I can tell you. I don't care what type of system you use, you implement a created airspace, it's going to reduce your liability tenfold, and here's why. We, every year, we invite some major players back to our corporate office, and we do a round table. We talk about how we can better improve you know, product availability, customer service, you name it. But one question that we ask at the end of the seminar is this, for those of you that have implemented a rain screen system, have you ever experienced any callbacks, any liabilities? Now, what I wanted to point out to you is we're one manufacturer of several of drainage mats. We've installed millions upon millions of square footage in North America. I am proud to say year to date, we've experienced zero failures. Now again, we're just one manufacturer of several. So again, I just want to kind of hit home the importance of a created airspace. We also manufacture air weather barriers. So when we implement a full system warranty, which architects, building envelope consultants absolutely love, they love that one product from, from one umbrella. So if there's ever an issue, guess what? You know what, there's only one single source to go to for a resolution. We can offer and implement our air weather barrier and our rain screen system, and we're so confident in the performance value, we offer up to a 30-year warranty. Now, being in this industry for quite some time, I can tell you this, I've seen warranties up to 15 years, sometimes maybe 20, but I've never seen 30. So again, I just want to kind of share that with the group um, on the importance of a created airspace. What we're going to do in the next slide here is show a quick little video of that exterior wall assembly that we what we've been dis discussing here. So what we do is we work with a, a series of exterior veneers, whether it's manufactured stone, stucco, um, you name it. So what we see is we see the weave screen, we see the air weather resistant barrier and then a series of exterior veneers, whether it's in a stone application or a stucco application. So again, it's just kind of a, a quick 30 second video, but it kind of gives a good illustration of, as far as how all these products work together. Thanks, Mike. So we talk about old walls, and there's a reason why old walls were successful, but we don't obviously do this current building practice nowadays. Old walls were essentially, they were just too massive to fail, right? They had multiple layers, so once water obviously extruded into that exterior veneer, it absorbed and obviously dried out from the exterior to the interior. And so now we just don't build that way anymore because it's just too expensive. They're not energy efficient. But what I want you to do is keep in mind of this old wall building concept because as I mentioned to you earlier in this presentation, things are changing 
on a yearly basis because of higher energy codes and again, fire codes. So the next slide, we illustrate a more modern wall assembly. So let's look at this from the inside out. We have our 5 8 inch chips and board. We have our cavity insulation. We have our wood stud cavity, all right? We have our exterior sheathing, which is typically OSB. We have our weather resistant barrier, a created air cavity, and then our exterior veneer, whether it's, again, whether it's brick, stone, or stucco. One thing that's missing is continuous insulation, all right? So that's constantly evolving because of the higher energy codes. Not only that, but let's talk about fire codes, all right? Due to the fact of some previous unfortunate experiences, we're now obviously layering up even further where we're replacing OSB with, say, some sort of gypsum wall board. Not only maybe one sheet, but two sheets. So again, it's kind of funny how we're going full circle. We're going from an old wall manufacturing assembly type process into a modern, and now we're adding more pieces to the sandwich, I guess you could say, and we're reverting back to where basically we're gonna tell people, listen, this wall is so massive, it's, it's not gonna fail. But again, we have to meet those energy codes, we have to meet those fire codes, so we're constantly adding layer upon layer into that building envelope assembly. Next slide, please. So what are good characteristics of drainage mats? So obviously, product comes on a roll. Typically, any manufacturer is gonna pro, uh, provide a roll size of four, four feet wide by about 50 feet in length. Best part about rain screens, they're very flexible, they're very easy to work with. On this slide here, we show an overlap with a three and a half inch uh, piece of fabric. So why is that important? If you're doing a stucco application, it's really important to make sure that we butt tight the seams. So with that three and a half inch piece of fabric, it overlaps the existing roll that's been applied. So therefore, you won't have that horizontal crack if you're doing a one coat or three coat stucco application. Um, and not only that, but think about it this way. A lot of times when we get questions regarding rain screens, they're saying, well, what do I do for a bug screen? So think about it this way. You have that three and a half inch piece of fabric. You're down by the stem, down by that weed. All you're gonna do, it's a very simple, easy process. You're gonna take that three and a half inch piece of fabric and you're going to tuck it underneath the drainage mat to the backside. And now essentially what you do is you have this built-in bug screen. Very important point to remember. So like I said, it's real easy, it's very pliable, it's easy to cut, wrap around corners. So we talk about the keen drywall rain screen difference. You know, as a manufacturer, as a distributor, as a contractor, we always want to differentiate ourselves from our, com from our competitors. So let's be honest, it's who we are, it's in our, it's in our DNA. But competition is good. And especially when we're talking about drainage mats, we're talking about moisture management in masonry. Anytime you have more competition, it brings more awareness. So when we bring more awareness, we still want to make sure that, hey, you know what, there's a reason why you want to use the Keen product. And this is a perfect example. When we talk about um, entangled nets, we talk about weights. Um, our claim to fame is this. We have over 50% more entangled net than our nearest competitor, as you can see. So why is that important? Why is more density more important? Well, think about it this way. Less deflection, right? So from your nailing point or from your fastening point, if you have less entangled net, you're going to create that seal around that fastening point and lose that drainage characteristic. So with that being said, even if you're doing a siding application, less deflection. If you're applying your metal lap, less deflection. So again, we want to make sure that we differentiate ourselves from our competitors. And that can also apply from a, from a, a quoting out process to an end user. You know, I, I worked with a framing contractor two years ago, and he's just like, Kip, he's like, I love the concept of rain screens, but I don't know if I can sell them. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, he's like, not too many people are well versed on it. I said, well, do me a favor. I said, when you do your bids, and you're probably competing against maybe four or five other different subcontractors, 
I said, listen, you know, why don't you list a drainage map? And it's going to bring it to their attention. Because what you're doing is you're providing value added. You're providing best building practice, as we discussed earlier. And it's kind of funny because he came back about a year later, and he's like, you know what, Kip, you were right. He's like, I was actually able to sell some of your material in a dry climate. He's like, I didn't think I would be able to. The point I'm trying to make is it's important to educate the end user on the benefits. And so when you can go out there and differentiate yourselves from a competitor and saying, here's the reasons why, it's a home run. Next slide, Mike. So let's talk about furring strips. Furring strips are real popular in North America, typically pressure treated wood furring strips for siding applications. You know, what we say in the industry, measure twice, cut once, but they can be very labor intensive as the next slide shows. So what we've done as a manufacturer, all right, we're thinking, okay, we're going to work with architects. We're going to get our product specified. So a lot of times we would get our, our full wall drainage mat specified behind, for example, James Hardy, you know, fiber cement board. Well, the mock-up uh, situation would come up and say, well, listen, you know what? James Harvey would come back and say, we're not going to warranty your material behind a full wall drainage mat for all the reasons that we discussed in that previous slide with deflection. So us as a manufacturer, we said, well, listen, you know what? We can do something better. So what we did is we developed Keen Easy Fur. It's a 10 millimeter product. And what it is, it's a high density entangled net furring strip. It comes in a roll dimension of four inches wide by 25 feet in length. Here's the other thing to consider. It's 100% open air, and there's a warranty that comes with it. With pressure treated wood furring strips, is there a warranty? Absolutely not. Is there going to be a warranty against rot, against warp? Absolutely not. So again, the most popular reason is the ease of installation and, of course, an aggressive price point. Not to mention, in today's world, we're dealing with a higher cost of lumber. Next slide. So the next couple of slides that Mike is going to show us is just an illustration on how easy the Keen Easy Fur is you know, to install. As you can see, we're very compatible with Tyvek. We're very compatible with James Hardy at this point. We have the blessings of both manufacturers. And this is a perfect example. You know what? You fasten about every three to five linear feet, it's a no-brainer. And the best part is it's 100% open air. When you talk about pressure treated wood furring strips, you're kind of encapsulating that moisture when you put wood on top of wood. So again, I want to bring awareness to this product. Not only can we work with, obviously, horizontal siding, but as you know, there's been a huge increase in vertical siding, just from an aesthetic point of view, a more modern look. Well, guess what? You can run the Keen Easy Fur horizontal. And these are just a couple more illustrations of how well this product performs. So again, the features and the benefits, it's easy to install. It can be cut with scissors. It meets most local building codes. Like I said, we had the blessing with James Hardy, along with DuPont Tyvek. And most importantly, it doesn't provide a, a food source for mold, mildew, or bacteria. So that's one of our newer products that I want to at least you know, mention to you all. Um, Next thing we're going to talk about is our 10 millimeter rain screen. 10 millimeter rain screen obviously has its huge benefits, not only for uh, behind stucco or stone, but also for open joint cladding, which is more of a modern look. So we offer two types of products in a 10 millimeter, which is our standard rain screen, and then also our UV rain screen. So with our UV rain screen, it's UV stable. And what I mean by that, it's going to be UV stable to protect that weather barrier behind it. And as you know, open joint cladding is becoming much more popular. Not only that, but think about reclaimed wood applications. All right? You're going to have some sort of reveal. You're going to have some sort of expansion and contraction. So again, the 10 millimeter rain screen proves beneficial for those applications. And what I have here is a quick detail of our 10 millimeter rain screen. So let's just kind of work from the bottom up. So you have your weep screen, you have your optional casing bead, okay, you have your metal lath, you have your thin stone, you have your keen rain screen, you have your air weather barrier, 
and then of course your framing or your exterior sheathing and then obviously your bad insulation. So all these CAD details are available on our website at keenbuilding.com. Um, so it's just another resource and, and source of information when it comes to detailing. Another product we want to talk about is our Cavarator. Okay, Cavarator is almost the same concept as a full wall drainage mat. The only difference is it's based on a panel system. So when you talk about stone masonry or brick cavity walls, in the past, that cavity space used to be two inches wide. Well, guess what? That cavity space is now decreasing. So the whole primary purpose of the cavarator system is it fits real nice in between brick and or stone ties. So again, it keeps that clear drainage plane. And if you've ever heard of the expression mortar damming in the masonry world, if you don't clean the backside of that stone or that brick, a lot of time that mortar dam, there's a, a lot of times mortar damming can occur when that excess mortar approaches the air weather barrier of that exterior sheathing. So again, it's just another cost to kind of keep that clear drainage plane. Next slide. So this, this again is a perfect illustration on how everything fits nice in between those brick ties. And again, thicknesses vary anywhere from three quarters of an inch up to an inch and a half. So, so again, we thought it was very important to kind of bring this to attention. So let's talk about weep screeds. Weep screeds aren't exactly too exciting, but there's a purpose to it. So it's almost like a termination along with the casing bead that we showed in that last uh, detail. The whole primary purpose is, you know what, we install that weep screed first, then we implement the air weather barrier, and then your rain screen. So anytime we have the incidental moisture, okay, that, ex that goes past the exterior veneer, there's a means for drainage, but more importantly, there's a means to work, uh, wick that material out away from that structure. Um, they're obviously available in different thicknesses and different sizes, but again, it's just another important accessory that you can promote to your customer base. It's, it's just common practice. So with that being said, um, we kind of covered the whole gamut. Here's what I will tell people in closing when I do these presentations, whether you're a contractor, whether you're an architect, you know, we, we get wrapped up in what we do and sometimes we don't take a step back and appreciate the hard work that went into, um, you know, building a structure, building a thing of beauty as it relates to buildings. Let's Take a step back and think when we build, let us think that we build forever. Let it not be for present light or present use alone. Let it be such work that our descendants will thank us for. So as you're driving by and saying, yeah, you know what? I did that project. My father did that project. My grandfather did that project. You know what? Take pride in our work. And that's all I have for, for the presentation today. I hope it was very informative and um, I appreciate everyone's time. Well, thank so you very much. Yeah. I appreciate uh, you taking the time and uh, teaching everybody about uh, moisture management and masonry. Um, the list of the CSI reps is there in front of you there. If you have any questions, please reach out to uh, your local representatives. Um, Chris, were there any uh, questions in the chat room? I uh, didn't have any that popped up. There was a technical issue. Just trying to work that out um, okay. from one of the viewers, but uh, nothing specific, no. Okay, um, Kip, uh, well, we'll give it a couple minutes in case somebody wants to type something in. A um, couple things that we've run into or we've been questioned about that um, I'd like to bring up to you is, you know, one of the questions is, is 10 mil rain screen seems to be coming up in Canada and will probably be in the code. Is there any reason we should be going a greater uh, cavity than 10 mil or a greater rain screen of over 10 millimeters? You know, it's all up to the consultants, all up to the architect and the design. What we found in, from personal experience, anytime you deal with 10 millimeter, there's enough for hydrostatic pressure release and capillary break. Um, you have up to the upwards to about 95% drainage. So again, you know, thicker is always better, let's be honest. Um, but what I would be concerned about is if you go lower profile than the 10 millimeter. Okay, well, thank you very yeah. much. 
if I can add in there, Kip, um, the NRC, uh, the sister uh, government agency to the CCMC, they did quite a study into the rain screens uh, years back, and they found that 10 mil performed everything that they needed it to do. And that's the reason that 10 mil is put into Building Codes Canada. Um, it just reaches a point of diminishing return when you, you start going farther and farther away. So uh, 10 mil will, will give you everything you need, by like Kip was saying, uh, gives you the capillary blade. Uh, you're going to let that moisture out, and you're going to help prevent uh, contaminants from getting through and, and uh, getting on to the WRB, the, which is the weather-resistant barrier. Well, thanks, Bob, for adding to that. That's good. Um, either you, Bob, or Kip, then um, what about recommended fasteners and the spacing to apply the uh, rain screen? Well, what we're finding I out think... is... Go ahead, Bob. I've seen a lot of the rain screens put on uh, with cap staples, um, and they, they can shoot them on with the pneumatic gun. Works excellent. Uh, you can use the cap staples anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. Uh, and I've also seen it applied with cap nails or cap screws if you're going into metal. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, and Kip, uh, I got a question. You know, some of our competitors out there in the rain screens uh, don't have a fabric. They just have the entangled web. Um, but you guys don't manufacture one. Is there a particular reason why? Yeah, what we found out is sometimes when you're doing, here's, let's, let's use multifamily construction as an example. I think it's fair to say that when you, when you look at a multifamily apartment, you're going to be dealing with anywhere from three to five different exterior veneers, okay? And with that, you're going to probably have three to five different, you know, subcontractors doing the installation sometimes. And what we also promote in the industry is when you do those transition points from one veneer to another, those are highly, you know, likely entryways of water. So to be less confusing out in the field and saying, well, you know what, I want to use this type of rain screen behind siding and I want to use that type of rain screen behind stone, well, guess what? It, it gets kind of confusing for the, the person out in the field. So what we've done through a lot of research and just kind of marketing saying, listen, let's just kind of keep this simple for everybody. Let's, let's, let's do filter fabric on all our products. So whether you're using it behind siding and or stone, it's basically one product fits all. And let's be honest too, there's not much of a cost difference with, with material with the fabric and or without. So just kind of really kind of eliminate some of that confusion out in the field. Yeah, another big, another big uh, issue in building is uh, surfactants getting onto the WRB uh, house wrap as it be or, or you know whatever they're using. Uh, surfactants uh, are things that can attack that uh, barrier. Um, whether it's sap from wood, uh, you know, tannins, resins, uh, they have a tendency to get it in and affect the face of that uh, weather-resistant barrier. Stucco, uh, mortar, once that gets onto that, it opens the pores of the weather-resistant barrier and you create a condition what they call wet through. And that never cures. Uh, if you, they find a spot with wet through, they actually have to remove uh, the cladding in front, put a uh, new weather resistant barrier over that, tape it closed, and that's the only way to deal with it. So uh, that's where the rain screens really come into effect. Like Kip had mentioned during the presentation, the rain screen uh, in the King rain screens absolutely ex exude nothing nothing that's going to go on and contaminate that uh, WRB. And as well, um, that fabric, it's stopping contaminants getting in from outside, as well as building components. Uh, sometimes you'll see people that power wash a building. If they drive that commercial grade soap through and in onto that weather resistant barrier, 
the soap opens the pores of that barrier and now you have a wet through and it never heals. Oh, very interesting. Well, thanks very much, Bob. I appreciate that. Um, no, that was kind of it for what I had. Uh, Chris, anything else come up at all? Yeah, we did have one question come in here and they're just wondering, can we use this product for retrofitting old masonry and adding other material over it? And I think the intent there is they want to keep the old masonry material and reinstall it. So is, is it possible to use um, the Keen products in a retrofit capacity, I guess? Yeah, Chris, to answer that question, we do have a product offering on our website that basically you can you can maintain that exterior veneer and really kind of work from the outside in, if that makes sense. Um, we have panels that obviously fit within, you know, in between the set locations. So again, if you're doing some sort of renovation type work, there's other, other products that are available to where we can maintain that original exterior veneer. Okay. And we, we commonly see that in masonry. We kind of, you know, very commonly, we also see that in metal panel as well. Okay. Um, and sorry, there was one thing Bob was talking about with um, with wet through and surfactants. And I know, Bob, when you and I were talking about this, uh, it would have been last week, um, you had mentioned that there, you know, there's a potential with surfactants in pressure treated furring strips. Um, you know, one of the things that I found really interesting about that is, is with the Keeney Easy Fur, you completely mitigate that. So I just kind of wanted to reinforce that for, for everyone in the conversation here as well, because I thought it was a very interesting point that you made there. Absolutely. Uh, all your your WRBs, um, they they tell you right up front, when you, if you read their tech data sheets, uh, some will say we have a very high resistance to surfactants. There's nobody out there manufacturing one uh, that states and can prove that they are 100% surfactant free. Uh, one of the real reasons you'll see uh, WRB manufacturers, they want wood off of any type of wood off of that WRB because uh, woods, uh, if they're pressure treated, depending on the chemicals, uh, if they leach onto that WRB, resins out of the wood do the same thing, the tannins, uh, that attacks directly onto that face and it erodes it and it creates uh, an opening. A good way to think about that is uh, when you take your clothes and you put it in the washer, when you add soap into that, the, the job of the soap is to really open and the, the, that machine is opening the, the fabric up and it lets the dirt get flushed out. That's creating that same type of wet through in basic terms. And so uh, the real push is to get wood off of the WRB. And at the same time, when you look at the, the people that manufacture wood siding, all of them do not want that siding on a building without that air movement that Kip was referring to behind it, because with the tighter buildings, we're getting less air through, it's colder, you're keeping moisture in that opening longer. So you need that air to be able to move out. And uh, when that, there's a term called solar drive. And what that is, is when sun hits that cladding after a moist, cool night, it actually energizes that moisture and can drive it back towards the building. Well, what's happening now where they're going to the rain screens, when that pressure rises up, it actually allows it to go up and out. Interesting stuff for sure. Um, I did have actually a couple more questions. Looks like they're coming in here. Um, one of our viewers is wondering, can you explain how a warrant would work uh, with the easy fur? What we do is we have a 10-year product warranty, system warranty, and so that's obviously readily available. Um, there's a couple of parameters that need to be filled out. But again, when you have a product warranty versus, you know, what Bob was alluding to with pressure tree with furring strips, where there isn't a warranty offered, um, there's, there's some information on our website that's readily available, um, and I welcome that. So if anything, that can be filtered through you, and then we can get in touch with that contractor and, and explain it a little bit more thorough. 
For sure, for sure. We can follow up with them directly too. Um, one other question that came in too is, can you elaborate on the bottom cavity of the bug screen condition and how that drain mat and the furring work to prevent insect ingress while maintaining that the principles of a, an effective rain screen? Yeah, so as I mentioned to you, uh, what comes standard on all our, our rain screens, our full wall drainage mats, is that three and a half inch piece of fabric, and we actually call that a salvage edge. So again, when you lay your first course down by the down by the weep screen, you take that three and a half inch piece of fabric that's down by your weep again, and you just tuck it to the back side. So what you're doing is, you know, with that created airspace, you have that fabric over it, and it serves as a bug screen, just like a built-in bug screen. Um, it, it's, it's very common when I get, get asked that question, it's like, hey, well, what do I need to buy for a bug screen? It's like, no, it's already built into the product. So um, it's a very easy step to ensure. Um, and that's the other reason why we, we do a filter fabric, because you think about some of the products that are offered as far as just the entangled net. Well, if you have just the entangled net, then what do you do for a bug screen in that aspect of it? You don't have that luxury. So again, just another reason why we offer it as a standard. Perfect. No, it's good stuff. Um, it doesn't look like we've got any more questions coming in. Um, so, you know, I guess I guess we can conclude the, the moisture management masonry webinar. Um, but Kip and Bob, I really want to thank you guys for guiding us through the presentation today. And also everyone that's taking the time out of their days, I understand we're all incredibly busy, spring's picking up, um, but thank you so much for joining us as well. Um, and a quick note to everyone who is with us today. So the Keen building products that were featured in today's presentation are available through CSI's dealers across Canada and the US. Um, and if you're looking to source Keen for your next project, you can visit us at allthingsstone.com to find a dealer that's near you or from the list on the screen here, you can always reach out to uh, myself or one of the other technical sales representatives across the country. Really glad you all took the time to join us today and uh, we hope you all have a happy and successful spring. So thanks so much again for joining us and have a great day. Thanks a lot.